So far we studied mesh analysis for circuits containing only resistors and independent voltage sources. Now we'll consider other sources. Firstly the independent current source and then also the control sources. Okay. Let me take the circuit where here I have an independent current source. You recognize that this is the same circuit we had earlier except that I replaced the resistor with an independent current source. Now while writing mesh analysis equations we had the voltage drops around each mesh to be equal to the voltage rise due to the independent voltage source in the mesh. Okay. The problem with the current source is that the voltage across the current source is unrelated to the current through the current source. You cannot infer the voltage across the current source from the current through the current source. The whole purpose of the current source is to maintain a constant current flow regardless of what voltage is across it. Okay? This is analogous to the problem we had with nodal analysis when we included independent voltage sources. Okay? And the solution is also similar to what we did with nodal analysis and independent voltage sources. Okay. So, let me take the three meshes the same as before with mesh currents I1, I2 and I3. Okay. And the voltage across the current source, let me label that Vx. Now, if I write the KVL equation around the first mesh, I will get I1 times R11 plus I1 minus I3 times R13, which are the voltage drops across R11 and R13. I do not know the voltage drop across uh, this current source, so I will just label that Vx and that should be equal to the voltage rise V1. So, this is for mesh number 1. Now, for the second mesh, I know that I2 minus I3 times R23 plus I2 R22 and I do not know the voltage drop across this and now I have to take it in the opposite direction. So, I will get minus V x to be equal to minus V 2. Okay. The problem is this V x which we do not know and just like before we sum the equations corresponding to these two meshes and we will get I 1 R 1 1 plus I 1 minus I 3 times R 1 3 plus I 2 minus I 3 times R 2 3 plus I 2 R 2 2 to be equal to V 1 minus V 2. Okay. V x goes away because in mesh number 1 it appears with one sign, at mesh number 2 it appears with the opposite sign. Okay. And now what is this after all? This is basically the voltage drops if you go around this entire loop which consists of these two meshes and this is known as the super mesh which is a combination of mesh number 1 and mesh number 2. Okay. So, by forming a super mesh we can eliminate this problem of uh, not knowing the voltage across this independent current source. Okay. This is like forming a super node to not worry about the current that is flowing through the independent voltage source in nodal analysis. Of course, by combining two mesh equations into one, we have lost one equation, 
but we now also know by applying kirchhoff's current law here that i1 minus i2 equals i0 okay because the current through this branch in the downwards direction is i1 minus i2 right here it should be i1 minus i2 but i know that value because the independent current source sets this current to be equal to i0 so i have the equation for the current source itself and i get this equation and with these two equations and also for the third mesh mesh number 3 i have the same equation as before so with these three equations i can solve for all three mesh currents and from there get all the branch currents and branch voltages okay so when you have an independent current source you form a super mesh right and by doing that you lose one mesh equation but you have the constraint corresponding to the current source itself that gives you uh, another equation with which you can complete the set of equations required to solve for all the variables in the circuit okay now we considered a current source which was between two meshes but let's say there was a current source along the periphery of the circuit okay something like this and this is not in a branch that is common to two meshes but that's in a branch that's on the periphery of the circuit so it belongs to only one mesh now in this case the situation is even simpler you know that the current through this branch is the mesh current i1 and that has to be equal to i0 because of the independent current source so this straight away gives you i1 equals i0 and you don't even have to solve for i1 okay now this is analogous to in uh, nodal analysis so this is uh, mesh analysis and in nodal analysis let's say we had a voltage source an independent voltage source between the reference node and one of the nodes so let's say this is node 1 number of other things could be connected to node 1 but the point is you don't have to solve for v1 you know v1 equals v0 okay so similarly the situation of having a current source on the periphery of the circuit is analogous to this where you don't even have to solve for this one variable okay so the mesh analysis for planar circuits is analogous to nodal analysis in a lot of ways the easiest case for nodal analysis is to have only resistors and independent current sources the easiest case for mesh analysis is to have only resistors and independent voltage sources now in nodal analysis when you have an independent voltage source you have to form a super node by combining two nodes in case of mesh analysis you have to form a super mesh by combining two meshes now i said uh, two but that depends on how the voltage sources are connected you know that in some cases uh, if you have a chain of voltage sources in nodal analysis you may have to combine more than uh, two nodes into a super node similarly in mesh analysis also if you have uh, uh, current sources in many branches of the circuit you may have to form a super mesh which is a combination of more than two meshes okay so all of this is uh, possible and these situations are analogous that's why i'm not considering them in great detail and i'm going relatively quickly through them okay so if you compare the two mesh analysis easiest when you have circuit with resistors and independent voltage sources 
and for nodal analysis it is for circuits with resistors and independent current sources okay and in these cases the structure also is similar we have the resistance matrix times the mesh current vector to be equal to the source vector consisting of independent voltage sources and in case of nodal analysis we had the conductance matrix times the node voltage vector equaling the independent current source vector and also these had similar structures they were symmetric and if you look at the diagonals in this case it was sum of uh, conductances at a node and in the case of uh, mesh analysis it was sum of resistances in a mesh and off diagonal elements were also similar in case of nodal analysis the off diagonal element was the con negative of the conductance between two particular nodes and similarly in mesh analysis it was the negative of the resistance common to two meshes okay and when you include current sources with uh, mesh analysis we have to form a super mesh and this is similar to having independent voltage sources with nodal analysis with nodal analysis in which case you have to form a super node okay so with this analogy and the detailed treatment of uh, nodal analysis you have gone through you should also be able to do mesh analysis and understand its properties for all cases okay